Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and let us continue our discussion about the polymerase chain reactions. So, in our previous lecture what we have discussed, we have discussed about the different steps and uh, how the technique has been evolved uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a span of a couple of decades and uh, how the uh, polymerase chain reaction is being inspired from the DNA replications and how the people have mimic the similar kind of steps under the in vitro conditions to amplify a shorter uh, stretch of DNA using the site specific primers. So, in the today's lecture what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss about the technical aspects of the polymerase chain reactions. Uh, and today's lecture what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss about the reagents which are important for the polymerase chain reactions such as the template DNA. Then we are going to discuss about the primer designing uh, more in an interactive way uh, so that you will be able to design the primer using the available softwares. Then uh, we will also going to show you with the help of one of the softwares how to do the analysis part and then uh, at the end we are going to uh, show you the how to set up the PCR reactions, how to add the comp individual components, what are the precautions you should take while you are setting up the PCR reactions and uh, we will take you to the our lab uh, and we will show you how to set up these reactions in addition how to set up the different steps within the piece, uh, thermal cyclers and at the end we will also going to show you the demo how to uh, prepare the, uh, and set up the PCR reactions and once the PCR reactions are over then we will take out those reaction products and analyze them onto the agarose gels and at the end of this lecture we are also going to discuss about the potentials of PCR in biomedical research or biotechnology research. So, let us continue with the template DNA. Uh, the template DNA as we discussed in the previous lecture could be genomic DNA, DNA fragments which you can isolate from the, from the environment as well as from the, uh, biological samples. You can use the plasmids or you can use the recombinant DNA, uh, you can use the viruses, you can use the tissue samples and uh, the only thing what makes a, a sample good or the bad is that the sample what you use in the PCR reaction should not have the nicks or it should not be a degraded form because if you are using the site specific primers uh, and if there is a degradation into your gene of interest then the PCR amplification may not happen. And apart from that when you have a degraded samples, uh, the degraded sample sometime always gives the non specific reactions as well. Um, uh, this also we have discussed the primer designing, we have discussed, uh, we have discussed about designing the forward primers as well as designing the reverse primers. So, uh, what we have done is we have uh, taken you to our laboratory and where the uh, uh, my student Suram Banesh has uh, prepared a small movie and uh, on the with the help of the softwares what he is going to show you is that how to prepare or design the oligoprimers or oligonucleotides, how to analyze them using the Sipton softwares under the different parameters. If you recall in our previous lecture we have discussed about the primer length, primer TM, the annealing temperatures, GC content, GC clamps and all these aspects he uh, is going to show you uh, with the help of that particular softwares. Apart from that he also going to show you the different types of defects which you can encounter into designing of these primers such as the primer dimers or the loop formations and how to get rid of these loops 
uh, suppose you have a loop uh, and uh, that's how the banish is going to give you a demo about the primer designing and the analysis of these primer sequences in this video we will show you how to design primers and analyze for different constants like uh, hairpin loops and uh, primer dimers how to analyze these things using various uh, online tools available. Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to design the primers and analyze them. So for designing primers first you have to identify the region of interest, your region of interest which you want to amplify from any vector or any sequence. So in second step you have to identify non cutters there are various softwares available but we can use new england biolabs neb uh, cutter version 2.0 after identifying non cutters you have to select a suitable vector in which you want to integrate this amplified region and uh, suitable restriction sites you will get suitable restriction sites from non cutters after that you can go for uh, designing forward primer so for for understanding purpose i gave this sequence so i'm using this sequence i will uh, use this sequence to design the primers and analyze the primers so this is the whole sequence but i don't want to amplify uh, whole region i want to amplify the letters uh, the sequence which is highlighted in green so i want to amplify starting from here to here so now the question arises what are the non cutters so you want to amplify this region and integrate into another vector for that you have to identify which are non cutting restriction enzymes so what i will do i will copy this sequence into uh, neb cutter and identify what are the non cutters so I just copy the sequence and paste here and I will ask submit so it will analyze the sequence and give non cutter these are the enzymes cutting inside the sequence but we are interested in which are non cutters so that means you can see here non cutters so just click here it will give uh, number of enzymes which will non or uh, not cut inside the sequence so once getting this list we have to identify in which vector you want to uh, integrate your amplified region so for that purpose so i have selected for easy of understanding i have selected pet 23a vector so you can see this is the vector map so uh, this is the 5 prime side this is the 3 prime side so, n terminal and this is the c terminal side n terminal means forward primer c terminal means reverse primer so i can use bam h1 in forward primer and uh, xh1 in reverse primer this is the detailed map so i have identified two restriction enzymes that is BAM H1 and XH1. So I can use these enzymes in forward primer and reverse primer. So after identifying restriction enzymes and uh, the vector, we will go for designing forward primer. So I will take this sequence. I want to amplify from here to here. So I will copy this sequence here so for designing forward primer it is very easy you have to take the sequence whatever you are getting up to 15 to 20 bases you can take as it is 
so if you want to insert a restriction in game suppose i want to insert a restriction in game this is the uh, sequence as it is given from this um, this whole sequence so i want to insert a restriction in game that is bam h1 so this is the uh, sequence for bam h1 here it cuts so i can use this sequence here so this is the this is our restriction enzyme here it will cut so we cannot uh, simply queue like this so there should be some more bases extra bases we have to add in the five prime side so i will use uh, so this sequence i will use so now this is five prime to three prime side so this is uh, our forward primer is ready so after designing this forward primer we have to analyze this sequence so this primer so what i will do is i just copy this sequence and i will use aligo analyzer software which is uh, specially designed for this purpose only i will paste the sequence just ask analyze so here also you can see there are uh, so many options are there like uh, you can analyze hairpin loop self dimer hetero dimer so uh, these are the general details what is the length and uh, gc content melting temperature uh, molecular weight so these are normal details i will go for hairpin loop is there any hairpin loops so we can see there are uh, number of hairpin loops uh, we can see different different uh, structures predicted by the software so if you want to explore this thing you can explore only two bases two bases it is bombing and uh, the delta g value is minus 0 0.43 kilocalorie per mole so this is fine up to uh, minus 10 kilocalorie per mole is fine uh, those uh, hairpin loops broken uh, during the uh, during the uh, amplification process but above that above minus 10 kilocalorie per mole cannot be broken so in that case what we will do uh, either we redesign the primers or uh, we will add 5% uh, 1% uh, is B10 or 5% is DMSO these are uh, these chemicals disrupt the these loops so that uh, the amplification will be uh, fine so next I will analyze for uh, self dimer is there any self dimers uh, and what is the maximum delta g so this is uh, this is forming continuously five bases it is because of the uh, restriction sites so those are uh, restriction site uh, those uh, homodimers forming due to restriction site can be broken there is no issue but other than that this is also because of uh, uh, restriction site but other than that we have to look carefully so is there any continuously four or five bases forming this uh, homodimer then it is very difficult these interactions can be broken easily so here uh, some of the uh, consecutive base pairs are there these are very weak interactions so they can be broken so other than that uh, there is no significant um, self dimers 
so this sequence can be used and uh, for heterodimer predicting heterodimer you need a complementary sequence with uh, uh, reverse prime like reverse primer you need so that we will discuss later on so we got our forward primer here so it is very easy uh, to uh, generate forward primer but in case of reverse primer it is somewhat difficult because not in terms of uh, predicting things it is somewhat tricky so what i'm saying is here we have sequence so in case of forward primer we just take an as t sequence 15 to 20 basis as it is from sequence it but here we have to take complementary sequence not uh, uh, 3 prime to 5 prime or 5 prime to 3 prime sequence we have to take complementary to this one say this is the sequence we got from here so what is the complementary to this one so just I will I will add here So this is the complementary to uh, this particular sequence. So as you can see, this is uh, we have to keep from this direction five prime to three prime. So I will take like this. So what we have to do is we want to insert a restriction site here. So we can insert a restriction site here uh, directly. So in uh, reverse primer we wanted to insert XH1 site. So, So this is the restriction site as usual we can use uh, we have to insert T here so uh, this is the restriction site uh, we added we can add flanking regions in between uh, flanking bases uh, before this uh, restriction site so now we got our uh, reverse primer so we have to go through same procedure like what I have shown in in case of forward uh, fire primer so just I will copy paste here and analyze the reverse primer so is there any hairpin loops only one hairpin loop that is within the range of delta g so there is no issue and uh, self dimer so 
so we can see here continuously four bases are forming in this case we have to either either uh, change the sequence uh, or uh, remove the some of the bases we can ignore uh, those restriction uh, those dimers forming through restriction site so next heterodimer we have to analyze for hetero and heterodimer we need uh, forward primer just copy paste here and calculate it will give is there any uh, heterodimers this is because of uh, restriction site this is also because of restriction site this can be broken those which are um, at the end of the sequence they can be broken but uh, which is in middle if you, uh, the those bases are middle it is very hard to uh, disrupt those interactions and uh, our amplification will be not good so there is no amplification literally other kind of interactions will be broken easily these are weak interactions so this is how we can prepare uh, design the primers and analyze the primers We have done all these processes for designing uh, forward and reverse primers. But instead of doing manually, we can do it online. We just have to submit the sequence and it will return, return the uh, forward and reverse primers. These are some of the tools available online for freely, but there are commercial tools also available like algo 7 vector nta primer female so if you interested in these softwares uh, or you can just go through these sites and submit your sequence uh, you will get your uh, primers uh, and then subsequently we are going to show you how to set up the pcr reactions this is a typical thermal cyclers we have already discussed the different components of thermal cyclers and uh, what we have done is uh, we have also uh, prepared a very small movie from the thermal cycler what is available in our laboratory and uh, in that particular uh, small clip what uh, students are going to show you is about the different components which are present in a typical thermal cycler such as the reaction vessels or the place where you are going to keep the reactions or the heating block which uh, does not allow the evaporation of the sample and the different types of buttons what are available for different types of operations within the machine. Apart from that, the uh, students will also show you how to set up the PCR reactions. So, uh, uh, the purpose of these uh, uh, videos or the demo is to show you the, uh, how to perform these experiments. In this video, we will be demonstrating how to set up a PCR reaction and analyze the results using algorithm gel electrophoresis. PCR or polymerase chain reaction is a widely used molecular biology technique to amplify a particular segment of DNA. It is also employed in biomedical research and forensic medicine. The main application of this polymerase chain reaction is cloning. To set up a PCR reaction, we need template DNA, site specific primers, DNTP mix, nucleus free water, and tag polymerase. For a 50 microliter reaction, in a typical concentrations of 10 to 100 nanograms of template DNA used and 5 picomoles of 
each primer will be used. This is an earlier version of thermal cycler which contains display unit where we can observe the parameters and change the parameters. This is a hard shield. This is sample holder and inside there is a Peltier system which can maintain the temperature fluctuations. For setting up a PCR reaction. Initial denaturation at 95 degrees Celsius, 3 minutes and these steps we will use 30 repeats where initial denaturation will be 30 seconds and annealing at extension extension time should be given 1 minute per kb and here final extension should be given 10 minutes and hold it 4 degree celsius Ten. Now moving on to the uh, third thing is about the PCR reactions. So uh, not only the they will let you to discuss the set PCR reaction, they will also set you let you to discuss about how to set up the cycles onto the machine and how to operate them. And uh, this operation could be uh, the machine what we have in our laboratory may not be the, the machine what is available in your institutions or in your setup. But the more or less uh, the uh, steps are remain constant whether it is a machine from the one company or the other company or only the uh, few uh, the buttons may be different or few the way you have to operate these machines may be different but the overall basic principle remains the constant. Uh, then uh, at the end uh, the Banesh and his team is uh, going to show you how to analyze the PCR product. So what you are supposed to do is once the PCR is over then you are going to take out the sample from the PCR machines. Uh, then you have to cast a agarose gel and agarose gel uh, while you are casting the agarose gel you have to take lot of precautions and then uh, uh, while you are casting you can add the uh, the dye which is called as the ethidium bromide so ethidium bromide is a intercalating agents and it intercalates into the dna and that's how it gives the uh, uh, fluorescence into the dna so once uh, the, the the gel is ready you can load your sample into the wells and uh, you can run the samples and uh, visualize it under the uv uh, transimulators and you can take the images once you take the images the, peop the students will also show you how to analyze these DNA both for the size as well as for the uh, amount of DNA present in your gel. Once the PCR reaction is completed, 
we have to analyze the results for amplification for that we need agarose and dae buffer first we have to weigh agarose and mix with the dae buffer it will not dissolve easily so we have to heat it in microwave oven until it get dissolved now agarose got dissolved in dae buffer we have to let it cool down up to 50 degrees celsius now before pouring we have to add ethidium bromide for detection purpose Now the gel got solidified, we have to take out the gel and keep it in the electroporotic apparatus. We have to gently remove the comb, loose the knobs. and keep the gel in the apparatus. Make sure that the buffer is submerged the gel. We have to fill the remaining part with 1x TAE buffer. Generally for analyzing the DNA samples we will use agarose gel electrophoresis. This is the power pack and this is the electrophoretic apparatus. This is a negative electrode and this is a positive electrode. We can change the voltage from here. For loading up sample, we have to mix PCR reaction mixture with 5x loading line. the loading is over we have to cover the electroporotic apparatus with the lid and we have to adjust the voltage then start drop After the agarose gel electrophoresis, we have to visualize the amplified product. This is the Kevidak MP where we, we are going to uh, visualize the amplified product. Now we have to keep the gel then close the thing we have to select here application nucleic acids with ethidium bromide exposure optimal exposure or we can select manual also then we will 
at quality images. Now we can find here this is the DNA ladder, this is the PCR amplified product. We can transform it into transform or save this image into JPG. Now at the end uh, we would like to uh, discuss about the application of PCR in different fields. So the PCR has the uh, vast uh, applications uh, whether it is a food science, whether it is a plant tissue culture or it is a parental testing means the all sort of genetic uh, investigations or whether it is a criminal investigations or whether you are going to use the PCR for the diagnostic purpose or whether you will use the PCR into identifying a plant species or characterizing a plant species that this is actually the particular plant species because many times the, the molecular markers what you are going to use uh, to identify a particular gene or particular plant is more specific compared to the taxonomical uh, evidences. So, let us uh, discuss few of them. So, uh, PCR is extensively being used for diagnostic purpose. Uh, in this particular example, we have taken an infectious disease uh, which is called as the uh, HIV and uh, what you are supposed to do is uh, suppose uh, a patient is infected with HIV or it is a sample where you have to detect. So, what you are supposed to do is first you uh, extract the blood. Uh, from the patient and from the blood what you are going to do is you are going to uh, perform the PCR analysis for the HIV virus. Uh, so, you have the site specific specific primers uh, which you can use to amplify the viral DNA and if the sample is going to show you a PCR product for the uh, the virus DNA, then the sample is considered to be positive. If it is going to show you negative result, then it is going to be negative for the particular disease. It could be the HIV, it could be viral diseases uh, such as the hepatitis uh, B and C, it could be human papilloma virus, it could be mycobacterium tuberculosis and so on that you cannot use the PCR based diagnostics uh, for any organism. You can use it for bacterial species, you can use for viral species, you can use it for fungal species as long as you will be able to characterize the particular type of molecular marker or particular type of DNA sequence which is specific to that particular organism and that may not be present in other organisms. So, as long as you have that specific sequence, you could be able to identify that particular sample by doing the PCR amplifications. So, the, the sample, uh, the, so the, the, the way you have to do is analysis is very much similar that uh, you are going to get the organism and then you will do the PCR amplifications. Now, uh, in many of the cases the uh, parental DNA or the parental testing is also one of the major, major uh, reason or major uh, area where the PCR is contributing uh, into the biomedical applications. Um, so, with the, with the help of the PCR, uh, you can be able to assess whether a child is belonging to the given parents or not. You can see that for that particular kind of analysis what you are supposed to do is first you have to characterize the DNA marker what is present in that particular uh, family and once you characterize those DNA markers what you have to do is you have to see whether those DNA markers are present in the child and as well as into the mother and father. So, what you see here is that the marker A is present uh, in mother 2631 whereas in the case of father it is 29 and 30. So, you can imagine if it is a child of these two mother then uh, the child should have the combination of these uh, DNA markers of mother or the father. 
So, you can see that the child is having a marker which is of 26 and 30, which means it is getting the 26 from the mother and the 30 from the father. So, that means it is potentially being a child of these two mother and father. Similarly, you can see that the mother has the marker for 8 and 9, whereas the uh, father has for 10 and 11 and the child has 9 and 10, which means the 9 it is getting from the mother and 10 it is getting from the father, which means it is actually be a potential child of these two uh, parents. Similarly, you can see the all other combinations where the child is showing the markers which are of the mixture of these two parents. So, the PCR is a very, very powerful technology to detect the diseases for genetic testing as well as for the parental testing. For example, if somebody is uh, prone to the cancer because it has a BRCA gene, that the BRCA gene PCR amplification also can be done to predict whether a particular person is predisposed to the breast cancer or not using the this PCR technique. Uh, then the PCR is a very, very powerful technique for criminal investigations. Uh, in the criminal state investigations, what you have is you have the uh, blood, uh, hair or the skin sample uh, from the side of uh, crime and uh, from any of these sources uh, you will get the cells means you will get the DNA and once you get the DNA what you can do is you can do a PCR amplifications and generate the particular type of pattern. So, what you can do is you can see that from the crime scene you got the DNA which, which is giving a, a pattern like this. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to uh, analyze the blood of the suspects which means in this case we are showing the four suspects, suspects number 1, 2, 3 and 4 and what you can see is that the suspect number 1 is showing a pattern which is not completely matching with the uh, crimes, uh, the DNA what you got from the crime scene. Similarly, for the suspect 2, the, the pattern is not matching with any of these uh, DNA what you got from the crime scene and the suspect 4 is also not matching. But what you see is that the suspect 3 is showing a DNA pattern which is exactly matching with the DNA what you got from the crime scene, which means this particular guy is the potential convict and the potential criminal who probably have done this particular crime. And the PCR mediated uh, evidences are very, very strong, very, very um, uh, reliable and they are being uh, tested on several time or several attempts. So, that is why the uh, judiciary system as well as the in, uh, criminal system is uh, utilizing and relying on the PCR mediated uh, investigations and uh, the, the result what you get is very, very reliable. Uh, with this, we have concluded our uh, discussion about the isolation of gene of interest. What we have discussed so far, we have discussed that the gene sequence can be isolated under the two different uh, uh, aspects, whether the gene sequence is known or whether the gene sequence is not known. Okay? In, in both of these cases, when the gene sequence is not known, you can have the flexibility of using the genomic library or to the cDNA library and uh, subsequently you will get the desired gene fragments and that can be subcloned and uh, can be used for downstream applications. Similarly, uh, if the gene sequence is known, uh, you can use the PCR as a technique to get the DNA fragments and then these DNA fragments can be cloned into the expression vectors for the downstream applications. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here and in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the how this particular fragment what you got from the 
uh, after isolating the fragment from the either genomic library, cDNA library or utilizing the PCR as a technique, how to clone this particular fragment into your uh, desirable transforming agent such as the plasmids. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here, thank you.